So this will be a brief review of the Bridge City MT2, the multi-tool two. Comes in this box, nice box. A little brief instruction. How did I discover this? I was really interested in their saddle square. And that's sort of been one of their, their cornerstone tools over the last, I don't know, 25 years. Um, and of course, like many of their cornerstone tools, it's not made anymore. Now, I have an interesting history, I suppose, with Bridge City. Like many people, when I first saw their tools, I lived in Portland, Oregon, where they make their tools. And I saw them very early on, and I thought, those are so pretty. But they're expensive, or they're too expensive for me. And so I didn't become a purchaser. But I never examined them really enough to know whether they were more than just pretty. I just assumed they're just pretty. Nice rose with nice brass. I'm sure very well made, but that was all I could see. The saddle square kind of changed my mind. The first time I looked at it, I saw it. That's cute. And I moved on. It must have been the second, the third, the fourth, and maybe the tenth time I saw it, that suddenly my eyes went wide, and I went, wow, that's a cool idea. Because we all uh, sometimes want to mark around the corner, and it's not easy to do. You know what I mean. You take your square, you draw the line, you move the square around, you now try to get the line straight. It's not that hard if you're using a pencil. If, however, you're using a marking knife, it's a little tougher to get it exact. At least it's tougher for me. So when I first saw the, um, the saddle square, I just thought it was so cool. They didn't make them anymore. But what they did make is the multi-tool. Again, open up the saddle square part, do it either way. The nice thing about the saddle square, the other cool thing, because the original one was a piece of brass and, and uh, rosewood with a hinge. What's the hinge for? Why not just make it 90 degrees? That's most of what you have to do. The hinge gives you the ability to do it this way, position it this way. Draw your line, draw your line down, on a non 90 degree piece or a piece. And again, it just was such a clever idea. Um, and I just I wondered about the mind that could come up with that kind of clever idea because it isn't revolutionary and yet it kind of is. So the multi tool, which I got from the Canadian outlet that sells the uh, Chinese made Bridge City tools for approximately half the price of the Bridge City U.S. main tools, exactly the same. So it has that saddle square. It also has two equally easy to use dovetail saddle squares, a six to one and an eight to one. Same thing. There you go, easy to mark, easy to lay out. It has a bevel, easy to use. The locking mechanism is a cam. It's a very, very nice locking mechanism. Bevels that I've had, the old bevels that I've had, and most bevels come in two or three locking mechanism variations. Here's a couple I have. In one beautiful old bevel, you have sort of a half of a wing nut sort of a thing. Move the bevel, lock it with a wing nut, and you're good. Not, not, not that hard to, to use. And the wing nut, on this one at least, is pretty strong. Then you have this variety, this big massive thing. I love it, but I never use it. Why? I have to unscrew it, then move the bevel, screw it back down with a screwdriver, and then I can use it. So it 
over the years, it's, it's sat on my shelf in my, you know, my shops. It's very pretty, ebony. But, you know, that extra minute to undo the screw sort of lost it for me. The cam works very well. The cam clamp also functions as a pocket clip. How clever is that? Stick it in your apron or your pocket or whatever, lock it down. Now, over a period of time, they, they say, in the instructions even, that the pocket clip, the cam, will come, what may come a little loose. On the back, you have a mechanism to tighten it with uh, an Allen wrench, a hex. Easy to do. So I've already filled it with that. You want to tighten it so that it's tight enough to absolutely hold the bevel without movement. Locked nicely. But not so tight as, you know, you have to force it to, to grip down and force it to pull up. So I've got it somewhere in the middle now. Easy to release, but it also holds. My bevel. But if you need to adjust it again, just a little quarter turn and you're done. Now, this has another element that took me two days to figure out. Nowhere in the description, either in the description online or in the manual, does it refer to the fact that this thing is also, according to John Economaki, a marking gauge. But when I was, I was uh, searching in John Economaki's blog uh, from a couple of years, blog posting a couple of years ago when this tool came out, he referred to the fact that it's a rudimentary marking gauge because there's a notch in the bevel blade. So I uh, a notch, a notch, what are you talking about? Sure enough, there is a notch here. So now I'm thinking, okay, there's a notch. How is that a marking gauge? My first thought was moronic, which is, this is like a striking blade, can I do? Well, it's not. It's not sharp enough to strike anything. So how is it a marking gauge? This is how exciting my life is in retirement, even though I'm in a tropical locale. I spent the next couple of days trying to figure out how this thing was a marking gauge. Put it in every angle, where's the fence? I couldn't, you know, it, it literally took me two days. And then it dawned on me. The, uh, the fence is one of the two um, dovetail uh, saddle. Uh, gauges. Put it up against your workpiece. The uh, the sliding bevel. Set it where you want. Now you have a limitation with the MT2 because it's a small tool. Uh, the MT1 has, I think, a seven-inch long bevel blade, so you have more ability. But I set it up on. Um, real marking gauge, but 
in a pinch or on the bound with the tool in your pocket, it absolutely can function as a marking gauge. So that is the multi-tool. It's a beautiful tool. If it has a negative so far, it's only that I find that I have to adjust the cam more often than I want. So I've got a bit of an addendum to this video uh, because I was really using the cam incorrectly, or not completely correctly. We learn how to use hand tools, and it seems to me most of the time, most tools back in the day were built to use a fair amount of force. For example, this uh, bevel that I showed before, if you unlock it, and you lock it down maybe three quarters of the way, it doesn't do any good. You have to crank it all the way in order to engage and hold the bevel. So we kind of get used to that. Now, John Economaki has made it clear that as, as an older guy himself, he's trying to make tools and mechanisms that are a little easier for us older guys to use. And this cam uh, is used on all his bevel products now. And I knew you didn't have to put a lot of forward pressure, but if you look at the rest of the video, you'll see I pushed the cam all the way down to the point where it touched the tool. That's not what you need to do. Right now I've got it set up so that it's about basically parallel to the tool, maybe an eighth of an inch above the tool. Easy. I flip it up with my thumb, I move the bevel, I hit it just a little bit, and it's locked. Flip it up, hit it, and it's locked. I don't have to force it down. And by not doing that, not only is it really easy, I mean, even if you didn't have good thumbs, if you had arthritis or whatever, you could push it down with the palm, and you're holding the blade. That was the idea of this product, or the cam portion of this product. So I wanted to revise the methodology that I was saying that I use this thing. The other thing that you notice is if you're not cranking it down like I was doing before, uh, it, you don't have to adjust it. You don't have to adjust this often as I was doing it before. You really have to put very little force. Flip it up, move your bevel, lock it down with very little force, which is really cool. So I thought I would uh, add that addition or that change to uh, what I'd said before.